Hello, friends, and welcome. Well, I apologize for the uh, the sound and the video because I'm not setting anything up fancy today because I just want to wrench, and I'm going to work on this amazing RC10 Worlds, or I'm sorry, RC10 Graphite Edition. Try to get it back to stock, try to restore it a little bit. This has had a die job on it, which I don't care for, but, you know, we all did that back then. No harm, no foul. Has these wonderful... Andy's A-arms on there. Man, they're so cool. But they're probably coming off. Because I want to put the, the stock components on this if I have them. We will see. I do have a different body I want to run. I have a nice, bulky Protect 2 body I'm going to put on this thing. And that's it. I'm not going to film much. I'm just going to show you where what kind of progress I'm making. Or maybe just the end result. I don't know. I don't want to film. I want to wrench. Obviously, I have something cool to wrench on today. So I want to get to work. You guys stand by. All right, guys, so one thing I thought would be really fun to do is to dig through the old parts box. You guys can dig with me. Now, this is all my RC-10 stuff, gold pan stuff. I had a lot more, but I've done some horse trading over the years, especially for those low-C cars. But let's see what we got. I don't think there's too much in here. This is like some hardware and stuff. Uh, those are the correct rear wheels and tires. They still feel kind of soft, so I might be able to actually run them. We'll see. I don't want tires to affect lap times if they're like rock hard, though, just to let you guys know. But they uh, they look pretty. Uh, these are probably the correct front tires. These are associated TQ. I can't read that. My eyes are terrible. TQ76, perhaps. I don't know my facts on this car, so... I apologize in advance if I get stuff wrong here. There's the matching rear. Uh, this is sand. Oh, that's uh, sand scorcher stuff. I don't know why that's in there. Directions. What is this crud? I don't know what that is. <laughs> Something I thought I might need. Print the internet, right? Let's see here. This looks like a stealth tranny. Definitely not going to use that. More sand scorcher. This must be a mixed box of sand scorcher and RC10 parts. Trying to conserve some space, I guess. All right, here we go. Here's some arms. Well, so I can make a choice here. I have some black arms here. This car has already died, so we might just keep it, keep the black theme going depending on what I have, if I have everything. I don't think I have any front knuckles that are dyed, and it looks like I don't have any long, long, natural colored front arms, so we might be forced to keep the black theme. Not really what I wanted to do, but that's okay. It'll match. A couple of old chassis. These are runner chassis. They're all scratched up, messed up. They're for future projects. Ooh, there's an arm and a knuckle, another arm. So I don't know what to do, guys. Do I dye that stuff black? Huh, we'll see as I go along. Nose piece, of course. Uh, shock tower, some spare gears. Battery box, a couple shock bodies. A black bulkhead, which I don't think we need. Way more sand scorcher parts than I thought I had. So that's cool. Ah, there we go. A brand new steering servo set. I don't know if we need that, but that's good to have. I think this car has bell cranks on it, which I'll probably keep even though they might not be stuck. We'll see. That's it, guys. The rest is junk. Well, I don't want to say junk, but you know. Stuff that I won't need. Jelly bean wheels. Looks like some hubs to put some modern wheels and tires on. I ran a gold pan on the carpet for a bit, which is really fun. Didn't do too good with it, but it was fun. So that's really all I have, guys. The rest is a couple spare bits. 
I remember them foam wheels. I wonder who made them. They're not bow link. I don't know who made these. They have a different spread on them. Anyway, I'm dragging on, right? So, uh, that's the spare parts bin. Not a lot to show you. But I do have some bits and pieces to put that thing together back there. I want to get back to work. So when I bought this car, it came with front trailing axles versus the stock inline axles. Now what that means is the kingpin of the axle, the part that goes through the knuckle, is actually in line with the axle stub itself. On a trailing axle, the axle sits behind that kingpin. The inline axle should have a little more aggressive steering over the trailing axle. Here's a good shot of those rear lower Andy's A-arms and the universal drive shaft that the car has. We're going to ditch the arms and keep the drive shafts. I wasn't sure if these were the correct rear hub carriers, so I installed a known good set of 1.5 degree tow-in rear carriers. Here you can see our factory rear lower control arms, the universal joints, and those 1.5 degree rear tow-in carriers. So I quickly went through the gearbox, swapped that spur out for the factory pitch spur gear, I felt that was important, went through the shocks, and started getting this rear of the car dialed in. We got those factory front associated lower arms mounted, I went through the shocks, tightened everything up, and everything went together smooth. Here you can see the only really big issue we have with this car. The front of the graphite chassis is pretty marked up. This car was a runner, which I totally appreciate, but I had to do something to try to protect the front of that chassis a little bit. All right, friends, well, it's done. I'm really glad how it turned out. Had to make a little custom battery bracing here to fit the full-size light bow. I'm not sure if I'm going to stick with that or not, but it is in there nice and solid, so we'll see what happens. Only issues I really had with this car were, you know, obviously the front chassis was chipped up. I think we threw a picture of that in. So I put a little, made a little homemade Kydex bumper for the front. Should help protect that from further chipping. I also sealed it up with a little CA glue, which should help as well. And I just want to point out a few of the things I put on the car. We did have some TQ front wheels or graphite front wheels. These were actually chrome. They were all chipping off, so I soaked them in some simple green for about an hour, and it just wiped right off, which was great. I had these TQ tires, the little spike guys. Uh, they match my little spike rears. When we run this, we'll probably switch to our Schumacher standard tires that we run on our pro cars, but we'll see how it goes. Uh, I mounted up this amazing Boki Racing Protect 2 body and uh, put some paint on that. I think that turned out really nice. I like the Protect 2 body. I don't know whether this car came with the Mirage or not. I couldn't really quite find all the info I needed on that before I made the video. So you guys let me know down in the comments if you know what the Graphite car came with body-wise. And yeah, I think it turned out great. I can't wait to run it. Uh, we added the Boki Racing dust cover in the back to help protect that exposed ball. I guess that's the differential section of the car. Also replaced the shock O-rings. Boki Racing actually has a nice little shock kit to, to uh, reseal these oil shocks up. Works great. And uh, yeah, I'm ready to go racing. We'll take a few uh, snapshots of this bad boy and get ready for, uh, for the warm weather. This will be one of the first cars we run this season because I would really love to see how it compares to our low C cars up on that leaderboard. So thanks for watching and I appreciate you guys. Be sure to hit that subscribe button down the bottom if you haven't already. It keeps us motivated to keep doing these videos. Ring that bell and uh, hit the like button. I'll talk to you all soon down below. Rock on.